What's up, everybody? My name is Chef Courtney Lindsay. I'm a vegan chef here in Houston, Texas, and welcome to Feed My Muse. All right, so today's episode, you in for a treat. We are doing vegan lump crab cakes, right? Vegan lump crab cakes. I bet you say, Courtney, how are we gonna make vegan crab cakes? And first of all, are crab cakes vegan? No, they're not, but I was on it. So basically we're using the lion's mane mushroom. This is one of my favorite mushrooms because, man, whatever you want this mushroom to be, it will be that. So if you want it to be chicken, this is a piece of chicken. If you want it to be crab meat, it's crab meat. If you want to fry it up and make it fish, guess what? It's fish. So today it's going to be all on crab meat. Bet. So uh, what we'll do is we'll start by breaking up the crab meat or the lion's mane into like little crab uh, fillets or crab pieces, so to speak, right? Man, and this mushroom, when I tell y'all, like the flavor that you can get out of this, I've made vegan steak. I've made all kinds of things with this mushroom. And it comes out absolutely that down on So some of y'all right now probably wondering um, the name, like Feed My Muse. Why is it Feed My Muse, right? So uh, Feed My Muse, man, is basically, um, it's paying homage to my wife, Chastity Lindsay. Uh, so basically she's my muse. And I have to feed her in order to keep her vegan. It hits the name Feed My Muse, right? So uh, basically uh, everything that I do, everything that she wants to eat, you know, uh, it's kind of derived from me trying to figure out what to cook, how to keep her vegan, what to feed her. If she say, hey, look, I want some, uh, you know, fried chicken. I got to figure out how to make fried chicken vegan for her. If she wants boudin balls for y'all, y'all down here in the south. She, she gonna get the boudin ball. And guess what? I'm gonna make it vegan, all right? So feed my muse. All right, so um, we're gonna get enough of these. So it's only gonna be a few patties. It's gonna be enough to feed about two to three people. Again, this mushroom, like, and then the health benefits of this thing right here, man. All kinds of health benefits. Uh, when you break it down, you can dry it, you can you do all kinds of stuff with it. But it's definitely, it gives you that, that texture and that flavor that you want in food. So people, people always wonder, like, why well, vegan food is probably boring. I can see. So in a crab cake, right? One of the biggest things you have to have in a crab cake is that flavor. You gotta have, um, just like the, the scent. And so uh, in Cajun food or seafood, you think about the trinity, right? So the trinity is basically onions, celery, and bell peppers. So for this crab cake, we're gonna X out the bell pepper and we're just gonna do diced onions and diced celery. And so we're gonna cook that down so that it can be uh, tender enough to, to go into uh, the crab cakes. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit up our skillet. A little bit of olive oil. So everybody got different ways of cutting onions. I don't know why I like cutting mine like this. I think so, it don't uh, like fly away, right? Oh yeah, now we cooking, baby. All right, so while we doing that, we waiting for that to go. Um, the next step is add a little bit of vegan mayo, right? Um, and then I'm a big, I'm a huge flavor guy, if y'all know anything about me. Or if y'all have been to our restaurant over the Brews here in Houston, Texas, then y'all know that if I want something that tastes like something, tastes like what I'm, I'm saying it is, I got to impart those flavors, right? So we got a little mayo just to help bind it. We're gonna use a little cornstarch to help bind it as well. But this right here, this is this right here is the goal for me. This is nori flakes, so basically seaweed. Um, you can get it in a sheet, crumble it up, you can get it already uh, broken up or uh, cut down real fine in um, like a nori fukashi, uh, like tubes. But nonetheless, it's gonna give you the flavor that you want, all right? And you also, also, if you want it to taste like seafood, you want it to taste like that old flavor, go with the Obey, baby. Give it what you want it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sequel kick that we're looking for, right? And then it'll help break down the mushrooms a little bit as well. We want these things to be a little translucent. We want them to be cooked, but we don't, they don't have to be, you know, like uh, caramelized and nothing like that. So while we got the, uh, the onions and the celery cooking down, uh, we're gonna get ready to start our tartar. But I wanna explain some, so the mushroom, you notice we didn't cook the mushrooms, right? These mushrooms really don't need that much time to cook, um, but um, the, the uh, acid from the lemon juice uh, and the mayo just kinda help break it down just a little bit to kinda get it a little wet, cause it is a lot of moisture in the, those mushrooms. And this hot uh, onions and celery, once I put it in there, it's going to really like bring it together and give it some moisture so that we can um, so we just kind of like hold together when we get ready to cook. All right. So what I want to do is do a pickle okra tartar sauce. Yes, I said pickle okra. If you haven't had pickle okra, you're missing a treat. But pickle okra tartar sauce. So uh, it's the same kind of concept in, in terms of making tartar sauce, but instead of using relish, we use using pickle okra. And we're gonna use all of the stem and all. I think it'll be fine. So, start there. And hack away, baby. Like a couple of sprigs of that. Now, if you're doing this at home, it don't have to be that elaborate. You can use dry dill. I think it still tastes the same. Uh, not the same, same, but it'll give it that same effect. Wouldn't be tartar without a little additional acid, so we'll go ahead and hit that lemon juice in there. Guess what? So, you know, the show is called Feeding My Muse, right? And so y'all know I wouldn't be too far without my muse being right there next to me, or close, or in a room or something like that. So, if she sees over there, I'm gonna go ahead and let her have a taste. Got, got that kick? <laughs> I think we're about ready to go ahead and add this to our lump crab. So now that it's a little, little more wet, go ahead and add a little bit more um, cornstarch just to make sure that when we do get ready to, to make those patties, then we get it to bind just right. You want to use just egg or any other kind of binder that you might have uh, laying around at your house or something that you, a gluten free, free flour or something like that. You can, but use it in moderation. But I use cornstarch because it's virtually tasteless, but it still gives me that binding, the binding properties that I want, right? So this right here is looking like crab cake for sure. Not just any crab cake, it's looking like lump crab too. You can just eat it like that. But we're gonna cook it. All right, guess what? Uh, it's time to cook, baby. Let's get it. Uh, so um, we got all that, that uh, mixture like put together. It's nice, it's wet. It's really ready to go in. So we just heated our, our skillet up again. A little bit of olive oil. I'm taking a, a scooper. This is a three ounce scoop. Cause I want nice, meaty,
Got room for one more. Oh yeah, and maybe she moving easy too. Oh yeah. And the mushroom would definitely cook through. I know it's a little thick, but we really want to like really get that long crab cake feel, right? So let that cook through a little bit. Um, give it uh, about five to 10 minutes, about five minutes on each side. Um, we're gonna get ready to flip it in just a second here. And we're gonna see what we get. So we're about to get ready to flip these bad boys, right? It's been about, uh, about four to five minutes. Oh yeah, oh, look at that bad boy. Come on, it don't get no better than that right there. Oh yeah. Come on, crab cakes. Come on. <laughs> All right, so my favorite part of the situation is plating, right? So you don't always have to plate like a chef. Um, but, you know, if you want to, hey, it's your private. So I like to start off with a little bit of arugula. It's going to be like on a bed of arugula. I'm going to do it two ways so y'all can kind of see, uh, you know, get some versatility in that thing. They almost ready, y'all. Dead serious. I tell you, these bad boys don't take that long. It's got a nice crispy edge on the backside. All we're really waiting for it is for it to just warm and just cook through just a little bit. Guarantee. Now, some people like to take these things out and put them in an the oven or put in a cast iron and just transfer it to an oven, but you really don't need to. Everything is cooked and it's gonna, it's gonna be just right. So, back to plating, right? So this one's gonna be plated with a little bit of uh, arugula. Uh, and this one, we're just gonna plate it by um, having the, the tartar sauce be like the vessel, right? So the tartar sauce would be the vessel for this bad boy. So I like to drop me a dollar. Just slide it right on through. Slide it right on through. So when you get ready to eat that, you are gonna taste that tartar sauce for sure. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. If this don't look like an amazing crab cake vegan or not, something wrong with y'all, y'all TV screen. All right, so I'm gonna let you go for another two minutes. We gonna get ready to eat, baby. All right, look like we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start plating these bad boys. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Beauty. So we're gonna go here first, right in our sauce. So I'm gonna go right on top here. Look at that. And then. So we're going right on top of See you later.